So how do we read into this to gauge future policy? And we can't even have, uh, you know, a little bit of respite when it comes to the holiday break, right, with Chinese stocks continuing to trade. Yeah, that's right. I mean, so much sentiment in the property sector in China is tied to policy. And when the Heilongjiang government puts out a statement on its own website and across, uh, of course, uh, the social media, essentially saying, and I quote, there should be an all-out effort to promote the real estate industry. And then that screen grabs were traded around, sent all around to trading desks around China, also to Hong Kong. Stocks soared. Uh, you know, and then all of a sudden, abruptly, it was put and it couldn't be found again. So it leaves investors again wondering, what is the future of policy? Will there be tighter rules? Will there be a further relaxation that we've started to see? Was the message from the Heilongjiang government inaccurate? Or was it simply premature? It left more questions uh, than uh, providing answers. And that's why we saw that whipsaw you know, impact on stocks on the A share market and also the eight shares here. Uh, and today is another day ahead of the uh, the end of the uh, the year, of course, uh, coming up uh, with the holidays this weekend. So vol volatility is the key in what would should be a fairly lower um, volume game right now. And Steve, we have to learn a new name. Briefly tell us what developer is now saying it will likely default also. Yeah, that's Cynic. It's number one, 41 uh, in the contracted developers or contracted sales uh, Chinese developers. So it's not a big player, but it's emblematic of the liquidity problems. It defaulted in September and October. It is now essentially saying it cannot, it does not have the financial resources to meet its bond payments uh, next month, January 24th, a maturity of a 250 million US dollar bond. So yet another uh, default from a Chinese developer.